Welcome back to the Poker Vlog. For this episode, we do something really special. We take a look at all the biggest hands that I've played since I started the vlog. So it's 16 hands, they're all over $3,000 and several are over twice that. Uh, typically, I don't usually rewatch vlogs after I put them out, but this kind of forced me to do that. And uh, it was just really interesting for me to see some of the things that I was thinking in the beginning of this whole journey and how my thought process has changed and how the vlog has changed over the years. So I hope you guys enjoy it. Let's go ahead and get started. About a half hour later, I pick up pocket jacks in middle position while we're playing six handed. The player under the gun limps in and I make it 20. The small blind calls and the four seed in the big blind three bets to 90. I got the feeling he was after me since that 10 eight suited hand. So while there's a good chance I'm ahead, there's no reason to four bet here. If I do have the best hand, I'd rather let him bluff into me while I'm in position. If I'm behind, then I don't want to put more money into the pot. I call 90 and the small blind tank calls. We go three ways to the flop. The dealer puts out jack 10 for two hearts. So I'd say that flop is pretty... God, damn it, what's that, uh, what's that one word? Fuck. Favorable? God damn it, Nimi! What the fuck are you doing in here? God, how did you get, how did you get in? Favor. Uh, the the flop was good. Okay, I was gonna say the flop was good. The flop is good. We've got the nuts in a three bet pot against multiple opponents, and one of them is very aggressive. The small blind checks and the big blind c bets to 165. This is a very draw heavy board and under normal circumstances I'd be inclined to raise, but against this particular opponent, I'm still not convinced he has a real hand. I want to give him the opportunity to hang himself. I just flat the small blind then tank flats behind me. The turn is the king of spades. It's not a great card since my hand goes from being the best possible hand to the fourth best possible hand. Either one of my opponents could reasonably have ace-queen, and the big blind could possibly have pocket kings. The small blind checks, then the big blind checks as well. I'm somewhat concerned about the small blind, but if the big blind hit a gut shot straight draw or a set on the turn, I can't imagine he'd check here. There's no chance I'm ever going to check back, so I bet 425. The small blind folds, and the big blind snap calls. I'm not sure what he has at this point. I'm almost certain he doesn't have me beat though since he check called the turn instead of betting or check raising. The river is the five of spades. It's a great card and a complete blank. The player starts looking at my stack though and then asks how much I have left. I've got about a thousand. He announces a bet of 875 and starts sliding his stacks of red into the pot. This is a huge bet relative to the game we're in and generally when people bet big and two five on the river, they just always have it. I can't see how I can ever fold though, given the way the hand was played and my image of him. I'm at the very top of my range and this line doesn't make any sense. I make the call, hoping he didn't smash the turn. He says I'm good. I turn over my hand and take down the biggest pot of the vlog so far. He said later that he had queen five of hearts, so he flopped the flush draw, turned an open-ended straight draw to go with it, then he rivered a pair and turned his hand into a bluff. He was a cool guy and put people in tough spots the whole night, but he got a little bit too aggressive from that point on and his stack went from 4K to 200 by the time I left. Three hands later, it's another straddle pot. Kevin is first to act and he raised it up to 60. I'm directly to Kevin's left and I look down at pocket tens. It's a strange position to be in because Kevin has a relatively tight under the gun range. Still, tens is gonna have most of his hands beat. I want to figure out a way to get it in against the hashtag king since he's clearly in the mood to gamble. I just don't know quite how to do that. I decide to 3 bet to 160 thinking that if the hashtag king either shoves or 4 bets to a smaller amount, Kevin is only going to get it in with the very top of his range since he knows that I don't normally 3 bet very light, particularly when I'm in such an early position. I imagine Kevin will only shove with ace king, possibly ace queen, and possibly jacks are better. Then I can just fold if Kevin jams. The hashtag king actually videoed his point of view and sent it to me, so I'm gonna put up both videos with his on the left. I synced the sound, so you should be able to hear everything that went on in the hand, including comments from me, 
Kevin, the hashtag king, and D Moon Girl. Here it is. Hurry and begin. Love, love fishing, yeah, that's uh, you got love the pressure. Yeah, thank you. You have 15? Started with 15? No, there's, yeah, maybe close to 16 now. Okay, you gotta see it on the screen. Yeah. Fuck. <laughs> How much? I want an exact count. I got you covered. Fuck. Huh. 1, 15, 17, 18, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 
Poker vlogs are okay, but he has several of the absolute best videos of poker players eating Brazilian barbecue that I've ever seen. He goes in the daytime to get Brazilian barbecue. He goes in the nighttime. This video here seems to be better than the rest as 16 people like it and not a single person on earth dislikes it. Okay, back to the game. In this hand, Armenian Mike limps in from early position. Joe raises to 55 with pocket queens. Destin picks up ace-10 suited on the button and makes the call. I have pocket fives in the small blind. I call for 50 more. Armenian Mike also calls. The flop comes 9-7-5 with two spades. We've got the fourth nuts. Checks to Joe, who's the pre-flop raiser. He has an overpair with a backdoor flush draw, but against three other players on a draw-heavy board, you're never going to love your hand too much. He puts out a bet of 130. Destin has an easy call here. He tosses in some chips. It's on me. I have a great hand, but it's extremely vulnerable. There are a number of bad turn cards. I want to get in as much money as I can right now. I put in a raise to 600. Mike folds. It's back on Joe. He tanks for a while before ultimately making it a really good fold. Against a check raise and having one player behind you, it's a pretty standard laydown, but a lot of people don't have the discipline to let their overpairs go, so nice fold by him. Now it's Destin's turn to act. He has a draw to the nuts with two overs and a backdoor straight draw, plus he's in position. We're both deep. Sometimes he might even have the best hand if I'm semi-bluffing with a combo draw, but he has a key blocker with the ten of spades, making it a lot more likely that I have a straight, set, or two pair. He calls for 470 more. You can see me here glance at his stack to see how much he has left. This is where I think the graphics guys might have gotten it wrong. It says that he has 2610 in his stack, but it looks to me like he has closer to 18 or 1900. He has around a half stack of pink chips, which are hundreds, a stack of purples, which are 25s, and two or three stacks of $5 yellow chips, plus some $1 chips. We go to the turn. It's the king of clubs. It's a great card. It shouldn't have helped Destin much. The pot is pretty big already. I still don't know exactly which cards I need to fade on the river. I go all in because I don't want to bet less than the pot, giving the opponent a good price to call, plus implied odds. Also, if I were bluffing with some kind of combo draw, I'd shove here too. We have to keep in mind that Destin has 18 or 1900 in the stack rather than the 2610 number you see on the screen. He's getting a little less than 2 to 1 on a call. He knows I'll have straights, sets, and two pair hands in my range, but he's probably also thinking I might have combo draws that he's beating. No matter what, he'll at least have some outs. He calls. The dealer asks him if he wants to run it once or twice. He says once. The dealer puts out the king of diamonds on the river, giving us a full house. It says it's a $6,800 pot, but it's probably closer to $5,200 or $5,300. Still, it's a pot of more than 500 big blinds. I try to stay cool on the outside, raking in the chips. But on the inside, I'm like, I could only be me, 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 though I got my own CD, on TV. Destin gonna be selling his CD after the show. Me, same OG. Day after day, I continue to be. I know I've had some jokes with Destin on here, but I think he's a cool guy and a really funny and entertaining person to watch on the live streams. Plus, he normally plays 25.50 on Live at the Bike, so I doubt he cares too much about losing a few pots to me. Shortly after talking to the camera, I looked down at Ace-10 of Diamonds in middle position. I raised to 35. Cutoff calls, the button, three bets to 135. Seems like a good player. He could be putting on a squeeze play here. Looks like a good time to do it. Probably better for me to four bet or fold. We're deep enough where calling isn't too bad of a mistake, I suppose, but we'd be playing out of position in a spot where we might be dominated. I ultimately make the call, tossing in 100 more, thinking that I could be ahead, and the player in the cutoff will probably call if I call, so I'm essentially getting around three to one. The cutoff does call. We go three ways to the flop. It's king eight five with two diamonds. We've got the nut flush draw and an over to go with it. I'm first to act and I check. Cutoff also checks. The button fires 135 again. It's a small bet. I'm certainly not folding. I don't hate raising, but I don't see the need to raise since I'm getting such a good price to call. I put 135 out there, and now the cutoff raises to 520. The button folds. It's back on me. This raise from the cutoff is a little strange since there aren't any two pair combinations that make sense. You can never have a hand like Kings or Ace King since he just flat on my raise preflop, so he's basically saying that he has exactly pocket eights or pocket fives. He can also have a number of combo draws. I don't like the idea of folding, 
I don't like calling for nearly 400 more and playing a monster pot out of position either. I'm tired of all these players raising in weird spots. I decided to get in on the action myself. I want to see what's behind door number three. I'm all in. I don't get snapped off. The opponent takes a few seconds before ultimately making the call, so I'm happy about that. He then asks if I want to run it once or twice. I never bring up running it twice, and ordinarily I'll let the opponent decide. Since he brought it up, I assume that's what he wants to do. I'm in what seems to be a great game with a lot of action. I only brought 4K with me, and I'm in for 2600 already. So if I lose this hand, I'll have to rebuy for significantly less than the max or borrow some money. With all this in mind, I choose to run it twice. Twice good. The opponent turns over five board diamonds. He's got a pair and a flush draw, basically a coin flip for a pot that's over 4K. I flip over my cards, then position the camera so that we can see the run out. Dealer calls the floor over for permission to run it twice. Run twice. She sees me filming and. What are you doing with your phone? Yeah, I was videoing. I can't video. Cannot. That's when we get shut down. I have to stop filming and put away my phone at the most exciting point, which sucks. Floor comes over, sees that I'm videoing, hey, tells me not to video. OP, I have A16, OP. I have to turn it off. Uma, four, eight, Uma, the, first, Uma. the first board runs out. OP, A16. King on the turn. And then uh, yield eight on the river. So I win with two pair, kings and eights, and an ace. Uh, the other player had five, four diamonds, or five, six of diamonds. So he had a pair and a flush draw. So I uh, got super, super lucky to win that. Plus, I still have all the diamonds left in the deck. Uh, the next run out is a three, and then the river is the nine of diamonds. So I make a flush on the second run out. I win both of them. Scoop about a 4K pot there. Big turnaround, I'm in for 2,600, and now I'm up, I don't know, um, maybe 1,700. I think I have like 4,400 in front of me because I won a pot after that too. This is another straddle pot. DJ Mello picks up pocket queens on the button and raises to 60. I pick up pocket jacks in the small blind. This is a standard three bet against the button's opening range. He just happens to be at the top of it. I raise to 250. Captain Key, who I don't know much about, also picks up pocket queens. He's in the straddle and he re-raises to 540. My initial thought is that this is a perfect opportunity for him to four bet light. Since it's a button open and a three bet from the small blind, I could potentially have all kinds of light three bets in my range. The action's back on DJ Mello and he's in a tough spot. Wouldn't blame him for folding queens here and getting out of the hand for only 60 rather than not having any idea where he's at against two opponents with me as the three better still to act behind him. He does call for 480 more though. I contemplate jamming, thinking that Captain Key could be 4-betting light, and since the button didn't 5-bet, he won't have aces or kings. The only hand in his range that beats me is pocket queens. If I shove, he may even fold that. On the other hand, it's only 290 more for me to call, and the pot is already 1,340, so I'm getting over 4.5 to 1. If I make a set, I'll have a great opportunity to double up, since I'm against two opponents and the pot is already huge. I call, not really knowing where I'm at, but I'm hoping to hit the flop hard. Boom. Easy game, the flop comes, jack nine three rainbow, a little bit of urine comes out of me. We have top set in a pod that's already over 1600, and we're against two opponents with over pairs. I check, pre-flop four better, makes a great check, realizing that it's likely one of us hasn't beat. The button figures he may have the best hand, and he shoves it in there. The graphics aren't correct and he actually has about 1500 in the stack rather than the 3100 that it shows. I have to restrain myself from not snap calling so that I can maybe lure the under the gun player into calling behind me. I put in a chip to call and the remaining player gets away from it and makes a great fold. With no queens left in the deck, my opponent is drawing dead to a backdoor straight draw. I table my hand right away since I have the nuts. The turn is a five, there's no chance to lose now and the river is an ace. We win an enormous pot of around 4,500. Our stack is over 5K. We're winning big and having a great time. The very next hand to pick up ace-queen offsuit in middle position, the player under the gun straddles to 100. Yeah, you heard that right, he straddled to 100. And believe it or not, this is on the light side of the opponent's straddles. When he only had between three and 500 in front of him, he was getting it all in under the gun blind. He won some pots and has 1,100 now, so he's toned it down. Every opportunity he gets, he's been shoving now. So we're playing 5-5-100, just like we normally do on the vlog. I've got 1,400 in front of me. It's essentially 14 big blinds. I raised a 400, 
hoping to ISO and get it all in with the under the gun player. Fortunately, the button tank calls. This is alarming, but at the same time we're playing Texas poker, it's surprisingly nothing like No Limit Texas Hold'em. It's actually much closer to bingo. I'm not sure what anyone at this table is thinking or what they're willing to call and not call with preflop. Tough to put anybody on a hand. The blinds fold and under the gun rips it in for 1100. His range is going to be pretty wide here. It might consist of anything from pocket aces all the way down to a couple of apples to apples cards. I wanted to get it in with him, but I'm a little concerned with the button calling the 400. He did seem hesitant when he called and I've already got 400 invested. I reshove for a thousand more, hoping that the button will fold or possibly show up with a hand like tens or jacks at best and I'll have some live cards. The button goes into the tank, doesn't like the situation, but he eventually calls. Right away, the under the gun player turns over ace five offsuit, which is weird, but not that shocking given how he'd played earlier. We're in great shape against him. I turn over my hand and finally the button turns over ace king. So we're not in great shape anymore. We're gonna need some help. The flop comes jack eight six rainbow. The turn is a deuce. We're down to three outs. Can we get there? No, we can't. The river is another six. Ace King scoops a massive pot. I've been playing for about a half hour and I'm already stuck 2K. May seem like a lot, but when someone's straddling for between 100 and 500, every opportunity he gets, and when others are opening for 60 or more in non-straddle hands, 2K isn't so bad. Later, I'm dealt Ace King offsuit, under the gun plus two. Under the gun plus one calls the 50. He's the player that I just three bet previously. I raised the 200, he calls, we're heads up, the flop comes, queen jack 10 rainbow, we flop the nuts in position against a tilted player while playing by far the biggest game of my life. The opponent checks, thinking about how I can make the most money possible, the limp call preflop, so I can't imagine he's gonna have all that much that'll connect with the board of all high cards. I go with a bet at 175. It's a down bet, but I wanna keep his calling range wide. Should never really have a set on a board after limp calling preflop, there aren't any draws to worry about either. He thinks it over, then makes the call. Really want this turn to be a blank, but it's not. It's the queen of hearts to one of the worst cards in the deck. If somehow my opponent called for the queen on the flop. He's likely to have another Broadway card to go with it. Many of those are now boats. The opponent checks, not too worried yet, and I don't want to check, giving the opponent a free card and a chance to take the lead. I bet 350. The player just flats again. This would be a great time for a deuce on the river. Not today, dealer's making it difficult. It's a nine, the opponent checks. I'm additionally losing to queen nine and pocket nines now, but any eight or king makes it straight, so I can definitely extract value from those types of hands. Part of me wants to check because this board has gotten a little scary, but there's just too many hands that I can get value from, so I go for it, betting 800. The player doesn't look thrilled, thinks it over for quite some time. He eventually tosses in a chip to make the call. I turn over the ace high straight, and it's a winner. I get three streets of value, inducing what I believe is a light river call out of the opponent. I don't have the slightest idea what he had. I take down a big pot for me, but really it's just a medium sized pot for this game. I'll take it. I'm all the way out of the $1,700 hole I was in earlier, and I'm currently up 1,000 on the session. I head to a cash game session later that night, and I'm already getting torched before Jared, who is mostly a 5'10 wild man, transfers over to our 3 5 table and straddles for 20 in the cutoff. I've got Jack 10 suited under the gun plus two, under the gun plus one limps in for 20. I assume he has a decent hand that ordinarily he'd be raising to 20 with if it hadn't been straddled so big. I just flat, the button calls, the cutoff straddler is last to act since it hasn't been raised and he makes it 120. The button calls, under the gun plus one folds. We're all pretty deep so I call. The flop comes queen nine nine with two clubs. We flop the straight flush draw. I check, the cutoff only bets 100. The button calls. I could just flat, but I played with the cutoff a decent amount and know that you can have all kinds of random hands. I prefer to take a more aggressive approach and try to take it down now since I'm out of position and currently only have jack high. I raised to 500. Cutoff jams for about 800 more effective. The button folds. I can't get away from it. I call. The turn is another nine. It's a terrible card. The river is the four of clubs, so we make a flush, but it's not good enough. The cutoff has nine six offsuit and drilled quads on the turn. No, it's not on a blog, man. It's on Instagram. Wow. Hey. Well, it ended up making the vlog because it was the start of a giant downswing. I lose over 2,500 that session. 
I get stuck right away in a huge uncapped 510 session. I'm in for 4,500 total. I'm down 1,800 before picking up 8-7 suited in the small blind. We're playing seven-handed, rec player limps in under the gun, under the gun plus one, raises to 50. Hijack thinks about three betting and then just flats. We're all super deep and I'm stuck piles so I'm not gonna be folding. I call for 45 more. The limper calls, four of us see the flop, becomes 8-7 deuce with two hearts. We flop top two pair. I check. The under the gun player checks, under the gun plus one, bets 150. The hijack raises to 450, it's heating up in here. I put in a re-raise to 1100. Folds back to the hijack, he just flats. I have 1500 left, he has me covered. The turn is the ace of spades. I've got no other option other than to shove. That's what I do, the opponent calls. My heart is in my stomach. The pot is 5,560. If I win, it'll be the biggest pot that I've ever won. And if I lose, I'll be stuck 6,700 on the day alone. It'll be the biggest losing day of my life. You want to do it once, I guess? I do it once, yeah. Sure, sure. I assume my opponent would have gotten it all in with me on the flop if he had a set. So I imagine he has something like a pair of aces with a flush draw. I'm praying the river is not a heart and doesn't pair the board. I can hardly watch this. You guys just tell me what happens. Okay. Holy shit, I can breathe again. It's a huge swing for me. Originally when I saw the river, I thought it was the deuce of spades pairing the board. I imagined that I lost until I heard him say nice hand. I almost said, did you see that the river paired the board? Didn't have any idea what he called me with other than maybe 10 nine of hearts. It wasn't until later that I looked back and saw that the river was actually a three. At this point, I realized that this is the biggest pot that I've ever won. I turned the camera the right way so I could potentially include it in a vlog. I narrowly escaped an enormous catastrophe. I cash out for 5,815, booking a win of over $1,300 on the session. A few hands later, we're dealt 8-7 suited in hijack. Under the gun, plus one limps in. I raised to 80. The cutoff calls. The button, three bets to 320. This is the same player who cold four bet me in the previous hand. Under the gun, plus one folds. It's on me. If you go to the upswing preflop chart, Look at what we should do when we're in the hijack and we get three bet by the button. It says to call with eight seven suited. It's a decent sized three bet though, and we're not that deep, so folding seems reasonable too. It's just that I have a vengeance against this particular player and don't want him thinking that I'm never gonna defend when he raises me. I call, the cutoff folds, it's heads up, flop comes a six five rainbow with one spade, We've got an open ender and a backdoor flush draw. It's a great flop for us. I check, the button down bets to 280. Couldn't be happier to call. I put in the chips and I'm praying for a four. Unfortunately, that's not what we get. It's a nine. We've got the nuts while playing higher in a three bet pod that's already big and our hand is well concealed. There's no better feeling than this. I check the button, doesn't bite. He checks back. The river is a queen. We still have the best hand possible. Can't know for sure if the button will bet, especially after he checked on the previous street. We're gonna have to bet ourselves. The pot is about 1300. Part of me wants to jam, but I don't want to scare him off. Instead, I bet a thousand. It may still look like I'm trying to buy it. I slide in the chips. The opponent announces a call. We turn over the nuts. The button isn't too happy and slams his cards on the felt. We're up 1100 and we're feeling great. We've also picked up a yellow bird. In this one, I pick up Jack 10 of diamonds in the cutoff. Dan Harrington opens a 120 in the hijack. I call. The big blind calls. We go three ways to the flop. It comes Jack 6-6 six, six with two hearts. We've got top pair. Both players check. I bet 240. Big blind folds. Dan puts in a raise to 700. It's an incredibly frustrating situation to be in. Dan plays pretty tight, but what the hell is he check raising me with on that board? Shouldn't have many sixes. There's only one combination of pocket jacks that he can have. It's bizarre for him to check an overpair against two opponents when two hearts are out there. Doesn't make a lot of sense. Feels like he's got a flush draw possibly. I don't want to call and see an overcard or heart on the turn and not know what to do. Dan doesn't have much more. I announce that I'm all in. I don't get snap called, so I'm happy about that. Well, oh wait, there it is. You're not good to me. The board runs out with the seven of diamonds and the four of spades. Dan turns over pocket aces. This is good. That's good. Thank you. That one stings, but you have to realize Dan only started the hand with about 60 big blinds. That's the equivalent to $120 in one two. Although the pot is over $5,000, it's not very much in this game. Just a lot of money to me in my real life. Dan then decides it's time to pick up, but before he does, he's nice enough to talk to the vlog for a bit. This is uh, one of my poker heroes, Dan Harrington. He got me pretty good today with aces. The usuals. 
the usual. What can I say? Anyway, thanks a lot, Dan. All right. See you, man. Bye bye. I was down to 500 after that jack 10 hand, so I had on for 5,000 more and in for 8,000 total. It's the most that I've ever been into a cash game for. Then I pick up ace four diamonds in the hijack and open to 120. Cut off calls, small blind three bets to 380. The action's back on me. Let's see what upswing says to do. According to this chart, when we're facing a three bet from the small blind with ace four suited, we need to four bet it. That's what I do. Race. Race. I make it a thousand. Cut off folds immediately. Small blind is contemplating what he should do. He tanks for a very long time. Doesn't look extremely comfortable, but he eventually makes the call. I imagine he has a hand like ace king, ace queen, pocket queens, or pocket jacks. The dealer puts out the flop of 10 six deuce rainbow with one diamond. We've got an over and some backdoor possibilities. Small blind checks. I down bet to 900. That's what I do with aces and kings. Those hands are what I'm trying to represent. Small blind continues to look uncomfortable. You can see him there in the black shirt. He adjusts himself quite a bit. He's going through all the options for quite some time, gets his chips out and makes the call. Really feels like he has an ace high hand. I'm not beating any of those, but I don't think he'd be able to call another bet if he doesn't make a pair. The dealer puts out the turn. It's the seven of spades, basically a complete blank. The opponent checks. I can either shut down or I can go with my gut and apply maximum pressure. I announce a bet. 2300. 2300. My heart is racing. It's by far the biggest bluff that I've ever attempted. The adrenaline's pumping. There's already over 6,000 in the middle. If I get called, the pot will be 8,500. If I lose, I'll have the worst losing session of my entire life. The opponent backhands his cards into the muck. We get the largest bluff through that we've ever made. Going with our instincts pays off huge. We had another 2,000 to our stack. There's 7,600 in front of us, but we're in for piles, so we're still stuck about 400 on the day. We've got ace 10 suited in the small blind. Under the gun plus one opens a 60. He's a fairly new player. I don't know anything about him, except he appears to be a regular since the other players at the table all said hi to him as he took his seat. He opened from early position in a game where there's lots of three betting, so I imagine he's gonna have a narrow range consisting of mostly high cards and pocket pairs from aces down to sevens. I call, the big blind calls, as does the under the gun straddler. We're going four ways to the flop and it's eight, six, four with two clubs. We have the nut flush draw with two overs and a backdoor straight draw. It's a great flop for us. I check, the big blind and under the gun players both check, then under the gun plus one bets 140. It's not gonna be a flop that connects well with this range since it's mostly low cards. For that reason, I consider check raising to hopefully win it without actually having to make a hand. Got so much potential though, and it's not that large of a bet, so I flat, somewhat disguising the strength of my hand. The big blind folds, the under the gun player now raises to 510. In my mind, this seems like a small sizing for someone out of position on the preflop raiser with a very draw heavy board and two opponents. Can't imagine a hand like a straight or a set raising for that amount. Seems more likely that this player has a one pair hand and he's trying to see where he's at. Perhaps he's also recognized this won't be a good flop for under the gun plus one's range, so he's taking a small stab at it as a bluff. I only fly to the initial flop bet, so my range is mostly gonna be capped at one pair hands. You may think that he just has to get through the preflop raiser and then I'll fold a hand like a pair of eights or a pocket seven since I'd be playing out of position. Currently 1,030 in the middle, and it's only 370 more. Under the gun plus one is getting almost three to one on a call, and I'll be getting almost four to one. Except, under the gun plus one asks the under the gun player to lift up his hand so we can see how much the under the gun player has left. Then he ships it in there. I've only got 2,300 or so. I imagine that under the gun plus one doesn't think that I'll have a hand as strong as I do. He's probably only focused on getting it in against the under the gun player, who has about 1650 left. There are gonna be very few set combinations in under the gun plus one's range. He's essentially all in for only around 100 big blinds effective. Could be doing that with all kinds of over pairs, some flush draws that I'm ahead of, one or two sets, and maybe even some other combo draw hands. Here's what a very narrow range would look like that he could have. And here's what my hand looks like against that range. You can see that I'm doing pretty well. His actual range might even be quite a bit wider. I definitely could just fold since I don't have that much money invested, but there's a lot already in the middle. I've underwrapped the strength of my hand. There's at least some small chance that I'm ahead of the under the gun plus one player. If not, I'll likely have somewhere between eight and 12 outs. This is an opportunity for me to play my biggest pot ever, and I can probably run it twice to at least chop the pot. Sometimes you just get the feeling that you're gonna win. That's what I have in this case, especially since I haven't made many hands or gotten particularly good runouts today. This is my time. It'll be exciting for the vlog. I make the call, get it in for a monster pot. Under the gun snap folds, which doesn't surprise me too much. He could have had a very wide range and probably wasn't too strong. Eights or four? Either. Twice? Yeah. I show my hand, then we get some bad news. I have a set. A set? Yeah. Twice. We're up against the top of the opponent's range. We missed a flush earlier today. It'd be a pretty good time to hit a flush on at least one of these two runouts. My heart's racing. The first turn is the deuce of spades. Please give me a club on the river so I can free roll the next board. Nope, 
It's a jack of spades. We break that one and are only gonna chop this at best. First turn on the second run out is the ace of spades. We make a pair, it doesn't help us at all though. Every card so far has been black, but not one of them has given us what we need. It's like the poker gods are toying with my emotions. It's gonna be one more chance to hit. We don't get there. The opponent scoops it with pocket sixes, which I thought might not even be in his preflop opening range. Took a gamble that really didn't have to take. Got it in bad, and we got punished. We're up about 500 on the session. Then we pick up pocket queens and hijack. There's a button straddle. The action's on the small blind first. He raises to 40. The big blind calls, and so does the under the gun player. I could go either way between calling and three betting since I imagine the small blind is gonna have an extremely narrow opening range with eight other players to act behind him and being guaranteed to be out of position for the entire hand. Ultimately, I go with a three bet to 225. The small blind is an action player and he's made it clear that he's out to get some Bradley dollars. He makes the call. The big blind and under the gun players both fold. It's heads up in a pot that's already large. The dealer puts out eight seven deuce with two diamonds. The small blind checks. Probably would have gotten four bet by aces or kings preflop. I should have the best hand. I don't want to see any overcards or any diamonds without making my opponent pay for it. I bet 300. Shortly after I get my chips out there, the small blind announces a raise to 750. I don't see how I can fold. People somehow always have it though. I've got 1310 total. The opponent has me barely covered. I guess I can't get away from this one. Come on. I get snap called. Then I hear. That doesn't make me feel too great. Sounds like it could be up against kings. Not to worry, dudes. We drill a queen on the turn for top set. I table it. The river's a five. We essentially have the nuts. Small blind throws his cards down in frustration. I thought that I might have bad beat him, but it turns out we were ahead the whole time. He has pocket jacks. Our assessment of the situation was correct in that we didn't get four bet preflop, so we were probably ahead. The dealer gets a count of the chips since we were very even to start the hand. What makes this especially cool is that I look behind me and my dad's standing right there watching. Didn't know he was around, but he happened to stop by to bring me some lunch. He gets to see me win a pot that's over $3,000. It's one of the biggest pots that I've won all year. I couldn't be happier since I was certainly going through a rough patch, particularly in sessions that I've been filming. I'm up $2,150 today, but the run good is just getting started. I've got about 3K in front of me. I need to hit the God Mode switch. With a little luck, I can potentially have one of the biggest wins of my life. Lo and behold, less than 10 minutes after buying the chips, I pick up pocket queens and the hijack. The one seat opens to 75 from under the gun. Under the gun plus one calls. This is the first really good spot that I found myself in since the one seat sat down. I three bet to 275. Under the gun would rather check himself back into the loony bin than let his cards go. He did not come here to fold. He calls. Under the gun plus one calls as well. We go three ways to the flop. One time, please let me make a set. The dealer puts out 10-3 deuce with two diamonds. We don't make a set, but it's a pretty good flop without hitting one. The opponents check to me, I bet 400. The one seat doesn't think too long before he slides in seven orange ships, good for a raise to 35,000. Yeah, that's gonna have us all covered. Under the gun plus one quickly folds. It's 2350 more to me, and there's about 4,000 upper grabs in the middle. In a split second, my mind recaps all the times that I've seen him get it in. Only once did he ever have a hand stronger than one pair. Called a check raise jam against Jake with a straight draw on the turn. Called an overbet jam with only jack high and a backdoor draw against another player. And he overbet jammed with jacks on a 10 high board. Could have jacks again here. Could have a flush draw or hand even as bad as ace 10. I wouldn't even be surprised to see him play five forward this way. So I'm thinking, I hear him say, Tough spot. Not really. I've been looking forward to a hand like this with you all night. I call, and as soon as I do, the one seat turns over pocket tens. That's pretty good. Wow. He's got the nuts. My heart sinks as I'm thinking about the situation. I'm playing the biggest pot of my life immediately after adding on against one of the wildest opponents I've ever played against. I'm drawing nearly dead. It's a perfect storm. This seems like a good opportunity to use the one time. The turn is the eight of hearts. I was hoping it'd at least be a diamond to give me more outs. The river is the nine of hearts. Oh. The last session that I played before all the casinos shut down. I don't even get to cash out. And I have one of the biggest losing days I've ever had. That's it for this one guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please remember to hit the like and subscribe buttons because it helps out the channel a ton. Uh, be sure to hit that notification bell also, that way you're notified anytime I put out a new video. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to let me know in the comment section. I'm happy to get back to you. This was an exciting video for me to put together. I think it's cool just to look at the big hands that I played and it's obviously nice to win some of those, but uh, several of them I wish I had back. I think overall, I'm pretty happy with how I played the majority of them though. Um, some, some of those spots, there's not a ton I could have done and then 
some of them I definitely could have done some things differently. It's been a couple months since I played some live poker. I'm really looking forward to getting back after it. I can't wait. I think poker is in kind of a strange situation right now and I'm not sure when it's gonna get back to normal. Could be a little while, but when it does, I'm gonna be back out there. I'm gonna be uh, videoing and making more poker vlogs. If you guys have any ideas for content that you wanna see me create now, then let me know down below and uh, maybe I can make it happen. Hope you guys are staying safe and doing about as well as you can be under the circumstances. And uh, hopefully I will be in a casino near you soon and we're gonna be having some drinks and playing some poker. All right, see you guys.